Wonderful, what a great combination of experiences that we have just seen. To begin with, may I request Sri Sanjay Bhusaret, the additional Chief Secretary, Excise and Sugar Industry Department, Government of Uttar Pradesh, to please join us on stage for the lamp lighting ceremony. Sir, if you could please join us on stage. Can we have a round of applause for Sri Sanjay Bhusaret? I'd also like to request Mr. Anish Dhaban, Chief Operating Officer, Public Sector, Microsoft India, to please join us on stage for the lamp lighting ceremony. A round of applause, please. And Dr. Ravi Gupta, Founder and CEO, Elite Techno Media, and Editor-in-Chief, eGov Magazine and Digital Learning Magazine. Can we have the lamp lighting, please? <laughs> May I request uh, Sanjay sir and Ani Mr. Anish Dhawan to please take their seats on the dais. And may I request, and I would like to now welcome Dr. Ravi Gupta, founder and CEO of Elex Technomedia Private Limited, and editor-in-chief of eGov Magazine and Digital Magazine. Dr. Ravi Gupta has conceptualized and orchestrated several national and international knowledge exchanges and collaborative discussion platforms in different parts of the world. Dr. Gupta, a social entrepreneur, has been promoting the concept of information and communication technology for the development of society for the last two decades through research advocacy, conferences, publications, and workshops. A doctorate in business economics from University of Delhi, he is a double M tech from prestigious institutions like IIT Roorkee and IIT Kanpur. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Ravi Gupta on stage for his welcome address. Can we please put our hands together for Dr. Ravi Gupta? Welcome, uh, honorable uh, delegates on the uh, dais. Uh, our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Sanjay uh, Pusreddy ji, who is the additional uh, chief secretary, excise and sugar industry department, government of Uttar Pradesh. Welcome, sir. I uh, also welcome uh, Anish Dhawanji, who is the chief operating officer, uh, public sector, Microsoft India. And I welcome our esteemed delegates in this room. Uh, this event uh, 
which is the digital governance uh, summit uh, under the overarching umbrella called Future Ready Bharat. It's looking at how IT is uh, making a change in the lives of the common man in India. How are the government departments uh, taking initiatives in this uh, arena of uh, making government services digital and uh, uh, making citizen services uh, much, much more accessible and easy to use uh, for the uh, uh, common man. In the state of UP, almost each and every department is uh, us uh, uh, using IT in a big way. But uh, Uttar Pradesh is a uh, agriculture driven state and sugar cane production is one of the most important economic activity which happens in Uttar Pradesh. And huge uh, amount of economic activity is linked to the uh, sugarcane production. And uh, linked to, it is the excise department, uh, which is uh, again one of the biggest revenue generators of the government, uh, government across any state of the country. So in this context, uh, context uh, we have this fireside chat organized along with uh, uh, Sri uh, Sanjay ji, who will uh, speak about his experience in implementing IT in the departments and these uh, experiences and innovations which are happening in UP are being uh, 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 replicated across India by several states. Several states are showing interest to learn from it and implement it. So it's a, a matter of uh, pride uh, for the state of UP. Along uh, with him, uh, we have uh, today an impressive uh, line of speakers uh, across various uh, sectors of the um, government of the UP. And uh, at uh, 4 uh, p.m., uh, we will have the keynote session by Sri uh, Durga Shankar Mishra, who is the Chief Secretary of Government of Uttar Pradesh and who was uh, earlier Secretary of Ministry of uh, housing and urban affairs in the government of India. And he has implemented several IT uh, initiatives across the various departments. So it will be an, another honor to listen to him. Besides him, uh, uh, there are the various other uh, uh, experts from uh, uh, Soft India, uh, Manish Gupta and Nitin Gupta, who will also be speaking on uh, various technological aspects in governance. With this, I uh, hand over this uh, session to Anish Dhawanji, who is the Chief Operating Officer, Public Sector, Microsoft India, to have a fireside chat with Sri Sanjay Bhusreddi ji, who is the ACS, Excise and Sugar Industry Department, Government of Uttar Pradesh. Thank you. Manish ji, over to you. Achha, before that, actually I have uh, forgot, and I apologize for that. I think, uh, uh, I, yes, I think, I yes, I think yes. I'm sorry for that. Before we go ahead for the fireside chat, I would request Mr. Anish Dhawan, Chief Operating Officer, Public Sector, Microsoft India, to come and deliver a keynote address. Mr. Anish Dhawan's career journey of 2.5 decades has been with global tech companies, where he is best known for establishing anything grounds up in face of tough challenges and ambiguity. He has vast experience in equipping his customers and partners with modern tools that result in secure, engagements and productivity in the face of evolving business needs, hybrid teams, and an increase, increasingly complex threat environment fueled by present uncertainty. Three things he is passionate about are creating impact, people, and technology. Can we please have a round of applause for Mr. Anish Dhawan, Chief Operating Officer, Public Sector, Microsoft India. Welcome, sir. I think uh, I first wanted to thank everyone right, for giving us this opportunity of having this great thought exchange. Uh, this summit is an opportunity, right? and we are starting with Future Ready at UP, um, which is a state now known right, for uh, adopting technology-driven innovation and development. I will quickly finish the keynote in the sense talking about what Microsoft has been doing. See, our internal mantra is Microsoft for India and India for Microsoft. And that is also evident from what investments Microsoft outside their global headquarters has done in India. In fact, we have three of our development offices running out of Noida now, right? 
uh, a fairly large team uh, does development and coding out of NIDA. Now, in our last, uh, I would say about two, two and a half years, we've seen a huge, huge adoption. I hope I am audible, right? I've seen huge adoption uh, and agility. Uh, I would say, uh, if I was to put it differently, there's been a very, there's been a stock change and it got, it got brought out in multiple conversations in the previous session also. Thank you so much. That makes it easier for me, right? So that came out in the uh, session in the morning as well. The last two and a half years, we've seen a huge change in every aspect the government has brought out, right? In engaging with customers in applications, there's been a huge level of agility, there's a huge level of innovation that has been brought in at a speed that we've never witnessed before, right? In problem solving uh, uh, at scale, ensuring continuity of citizen services, and Microsoft has been deeply invested and partnered with central bodies, uh, state bodies, and other uh, state-owned enterprises in driving that. We've seen that technology has been in the forefront right, of the immediate response that we wanted right, to different problems that the organizations faced and uh, the resilience that was brought out in, in keeping the smooth uh, continuity of the citizen services. And we are engaged and, and that's not all. In fact, there's been a huge change in the way the entire governance model is being run. The national e-governance uh, plan is a proof of that. And the way it is getting rapidly enhanced over a period of time. So Microsoft has been deeply partnering and is deeply invested in this journey. We work with, uh, uh, with like I said, with central bodies, state bodies, right, in actually helping them modernize their technical architectures, their applications, and, the, and their, even their engagement models, right, as we go ahead. What we, and let me give you a few examples of that. If you pick up any of the critical uh, verticals that you get to see or the departments, whether it is about agriculture, whether it is energy, education, um, power, citizen services, e-governance, We've got examples in the last few years where we've actually shown that together as partners, technology can help you really imagine almost everything. And if you if you just take a few examples, I know of so many states which actually use Microsoft tools to set up COVID war rooms and dashboards to actually monitor and govern the entire COVID cycle, right from tracking to diagnosing, to taking care, treatment, recovery, and back to work, or return to work as we call that. All of that using Azure tools and dashboarding. The critical departments that I talked about, most of them continue to function in remote, hybrid, and on-premise fashion using few of our tools um, like Teams platform. And when they started using these tools, we saw a tremendous uh, improvement, or I would say the reduction in cycles, time cycles, in feedback and communication between the leadership and the field and the field and leadership. Thereby coming out with more engagement models which were faster and more agile. If you talk about education, I mean, one simple example came out in the morning was uh, the uh, running the classrooms, virtual classrooms, so there was continuous learning. But that's not all. We did enough on skilling as well. Because what we could clearly see, and in fact, if you read somewhere, and when people were talking about skilling in the earlier session, by 2026, we should be, we should be having a gap of about 20 lakh digital workforce, right, for India alone. That's the estimated gap which is being looked at. So it is very important to empower the youth. So if you go to the uh, national career site, Microsoft has got a lot of courses for the youth to quickly enable themselves, skill themselves, and increase their chances of employability. And that's not all then. Our partnership with Lingu is helping, find those op helping them find those opportunities as well. 
we partnered with multiple state governments. The recent announcement you would have seen from Mr. Jagan Reddy of AP, where uh, we, as part of our skills initiative, the first batch of uh, more than 50,000 youth who got skilled on, who got certified on different different courses, actually were, you know, that was the first milestone that came out. Similarly, we've done something in. Uh, government of Gujarat as well, and then something similar in Karnataka as well, and there are a few more that are coming across. So we're working to see that one, we continue on the skilling part, two, we ensure that higher education and the primary education both, right, are taken care of. We have new engagement models coming in. We've got, so in summary, we've got the tools. You can, there, there will be no equivalent that you will find uh, of Microsoft, when it comes to technology, the breadth that I'm talking about, the footprint that we can help you. And the good part about that is we can help you build platform and customize services. You would have heard about National Language Translation Mission. You would have heard about eShram as a platform, registration of the, uh, the labor workforce, right? All these eSanjeevni, all these are now built on platforms where right from the end point, where, which could be a device for you, to the platform, we are able to capture the signals and bring out those intelligence insights for leaders like you to take decisions. So the whole idea is of this exchange is to tell us how can we better partner with you in your departments, respective departments, to help us as citizens much better. With that, I would like to end my time. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful insights that you've just shared. and. Uh, I will hand it over back to you for this fireside chat on technology making industry sustainable with real time benefits. Over to you, sir. So, with the permission. So, that would be awesome. I, in fact, that's what my first question that I feel. Chair, who is moderating the session, my colleague, Excise Commissioner, Mr. Santil Pandian, officers from the Sugar Industry and Cane Development Department, and Excise Department, delegates who are attending this Digital Governance Summit. In a way, our batch was around in the intermediate to undergraduation, we grew up with computers in India. The first computers came when Rajiv Gandhi, the, the then Honorable Prime Minister introduced in the collectorate, which was a 386 server and a dumb terminal, some 10, 15 dumb terminals which also was there in our academy when we joined. It was a new computer cell which was set up. And when I reached the UP Secretariat, that time Windows and Microsoft, this product came around 95. So it was quite interesting to work on a window platform. I was one of the first to work on it in the UP Secretariat because I was given the job to set up in the Chief Secretary, uh, Chief, Secretary uh, Chief Secretary's office uh, server client mode setup with uh, Windows and Microsoft. This is way back in 96-97 when Mr. Mata Prashad now is no more was the Chief Secretary UP. And thereafter it's no looking back. One had seen how the whole Windows platform has developed and Microsoft piggybacking on it has worked from uh, 95 to 2000 to 2010 to 13 to 20, 21, 22. And I keep telling my officers, 
that uh, the post 2013 post 2013 excel version of the microsoft is itself is a very powerful tool i also keep telling that even now majority of people in public sector and private sector when they talk of using computers they are basically into basic computing or basic use of computers we have not even reached 5% of the total potential of these beautiful softwares uh, in many places it's more used for editing and stuff like that slowly and slowly we are using it in a big way and we are actually using it uh, the way it should be used of managing high data big volumes data mining and these new things are coming up and with that the artificial in intelligence my own son is uh, into artificial intelligence and machine learning so from him also i keep learning i am a law graduate uh, who did post intermediate five year law course so now whatever you would be hearing would be from a law graduate's perspective not an itn's perspective from desktop to laptop to tablets to mobile mobile phones so to we have moved the whole gamut uh, from desktop to mobility and the technology has use shown its best usage in covid like scenario where there was nothing else then you had this technology to depend upon up was one state who had decided not to close down its industry during the national lockdown and we decided that all our 120 sugar mills would continue against the backdrop of national lockdown when everything was closed and shut down now how did we do that because getting inputs especially sulfur lime bags pp bags from four different states into up was a difficult task at that point of time my small gadget was useful in getting me all these four raw material for my sugar mills to run 25th was the national lockdown 29th was the last stock we had to run the sugar mill whether it was lime or sulfur or pp bags or there is a filter which will filter the cane juice and we could run it till 19th of june 2020 it was a very difficult task offices were closed only i and my instrument and i was staying in the same campus where my office is so i was a lone soul moving from my bedroom to my office and this phone helping me to track trucks and trucks of all these four inputs from rajasthan haryana up because west bengal didn't budge to open up for pp bags and from pune that's how it is we have developed a software it's a portal which is called up came up dot in and you can go and see it's a very sophisticated software portal and a software there are five modules behind uh, uh working at the back end of this in up dot in and all our 60 lakh farmers are connected with it and they can see every operation around the year starting from sowing to their survey every year the we have to survey all our uh, 45 to 50 lakh farmers their plots and see what variety they have grown how much cane they have grown because agriculture is a seasonal and a rotational operation one year they have to grow cane then for agricultural agronomical practices they have to grow uh, 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 paddy or wheat so everything is done the entire survey is digital the transfer of data from the handheld computer device to my server is digital through uh, the internet from there to pre calendar to calendar to cane slip issuance to crushing to 
fund transfer into his accounts. So from the time he uh, his field is surveyed to his cane is crushed and he gets the money, everything to his, through his through this beautiful software. And we have an app also. So you can use it through desktop or laptop or tablet or an Android app. And let me tell you, the digital literacy in rural UP of all my 60 lakh farmers, 45 to 46 lakh farmers are supplying cane every year. And you will be surprised that last year it was 46.45 lakh farmers. And my app downloaded is 46 plus lakhs. So each and every sugarcane farmer in UP is IT literate. Don't be under any wrong illusion. UP hai, bhaiya long ka desh hai, bhaiya long ka gaav hai, bhati shwapti shi, bhati pichhode dehati hai. No. He will show you the best use of IT. Any of my or all of my sugarcane farmer, you pick them up. Not only they, their children, their grandchildren will also tell you how sugar cane is done farming, how it is the, the survey is done to, 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 to getting the money into their account. Everything is digital. Similarly, our excise department is coming up with a very beautiful software, Track and Trace. Now, what do you mean by Track and Trace? It means that the, the moment the sugar cane is crushed, juice is produced, sugar is produced, molasses is produced, or now, we also make alcohol with the help of paddy or corn or potato or for that, any other material. Where starch is available. The moment the alcohol is made or the molasses is made, produced, we track that drop. Till it goes, if you are a connoisseur of liquor or you take once in a while liquor, so each drop you sip, is tracked. Now, how does it translate into economic terms? It translates, I'll tell you how, what, how does it translates into economic terms. Why I have to track each and every drop? Because I have to see there is no pilferage of my liquor. Duty is paid on every drop of liquor. You get the best alcohol, unadulterated alcohol. You don't get any Nakli alcohol because there is a popular saying that India mein red label utona bikta hai jitana red label bananya wali diajo company banati nahi hai. So that many bottles. And let me also tell you if you sell your raddi, if you drink red label and you sell it, sell your bottle to raddi wala, don't do that. We'll send people to you who will buy at 500 rupees of an empty bottle. That bottle gets recycled. Right? So that's the cost of that bottle. Now how do I get the perfect liquor, which is not adulterated. So for this, this track and trace. And let me tell you, my sugarcane app, it does a business of 35,000 to 36,000 crore rupees per annum. And that money goes into the pocket of the sugarcane farmer. Similarly, the excise software will earn and it earns a revenue of last year on 31st March we closed at 36,321 crore rupees. That's the revenue. Together excise and sugarcane it earns more than 72,000 crores. 35 to 36,000 we put it in the pocket of 45 to 46 lakh sugarcane farmers and 36 1231 crore we have 231 crore we had put it in the state treasury which runs the social sector schemes and other governmental fundings that's the gamut i have to track both these monies and to track such a big money and such a big transaction let me tell you i have to track 432 crore bottles of country liquor going into the hands of 432 crore people. It's not 432 crore. Our population is 23 crores. But I'm telling you for the whole year, 
the total bottle our up consumers buy is to a tune of 432 crore 200 ml bottle that i have to track and trace and get the revenue an equal number of customers which means a customer is buying every day or four times a week or and so on and so forth similarly i have to track 100 crores of bottles uh, going into the hands of i indian made foreign liquor or bios liquor which goes into the hands of foreign liquor uh, my foreign liquor customers and another 100 crore bottles of beer which people enjoy in summer when it is hot and sultry so that's the amount we use through this digital technology rest in the rapid fire question thank you thank you so much in fact that was so enlightening i am very keen to hear more what's next for you uh, in initiatives on sugar side as well as on the excise side see actually my understanding of it again a non technical view as an administrator as a bureaucrat that you cannot have a perfect it solution you have to work incrementally you have to keep developing de developing developing improving upon improving upon your softwares there would be new needs requirements of the system of the consumer of your stakeholder which you have to keep addressing so in that way your hardware will demand new things your security systems would demand new things like malware and viruses virus definitions and other security systems would demand your back end databases would demand your front end solutions would demand then your apps and other things would keep demanding so you have to continuously keep updating today morning only as every tuesday we do uh this is this we have been doing since last many years now when we started this uh, smart ganna kisan app sgk uh we do every we monitor every tuesday with our field officers till 12 o'clock we were into it then we had other engagements so that's how so uh, every day there is a new demand either from the stakeholder customer consumer government the this the department itself so we are con continuously working on both these projects the excise project is quite a, uh, a big project and uh, there are lots of aspects into it uh, we are working on it and uh, it's quite as it would uh, once it gets fully into uh, its shape uh, it would be quite a uh, unique and let me tell you both these softwares have been developed in up no other state in india i mean and i say and i state with all humility at my command no other state in india has these two softwares recently karnataka maharashtra andhra pradesh they have uh, they have come and tamil nadu and also madhya pradesh they have come to up and understood they have studied our sugarcane software and their farmers have also come their leaders have also come here sugarcane sugarcane sector leaders and they have gone and told the chief minister we want a similar uh, facility as up has a similar software as up has similarly this excise is again a very unique one which is nowhere in india yes there are some one of our small component is being done by delhi but delhi is a city state they are not producer they are only distributor in up everything starts from raw material production to then conversion into alcohol then alcohol to various beverages so that's the gamut and now we are coming up with wine yards in up so again we'll have to develop so the additional components for the wine yards which will come up now at the moment we have for distilleries for breweries we don't have for wine yard so wine yard, every uh, uh, type of alcohol demands a different type of uh, treatment so uh, we'll keep adding modules to our existing design and architecture and we'll keep developing it so 
when when we started adopting technology to bring in this transformation i am sure like you said that we already have a thin system in our system we already we have a machine learning landscape what are the typical blockers that you saw and you identified in people that people like us can come and help them solve this see we we when softwares came and it solutions came uh, 25 years back uh, government didn't had any where with all so we gave it to the private sector to government uh, to handle it but then they had their own problems and uh, mafias crept into it so in 2018 we decided to take it over back and we did it uh, in a decentralized manner but then there were other uh, architectural issues there was no uniformity and so on and so forth so then we decided to go for a centralized software and slowly and slowly we also learned but post 2018 19 first year it was not so not so a very good experience but then when we developed a new portal altogether completely from scratch in 2019 20 then our farmers are very very happy the proof of the pudding is in eating agar main aapko kitna hi bolo ki maine usme badam dala aur usme kishmish dala kaju dala it will be of no meaning unless and until i give you a bowl of pudding or ghee to eat and you try and then you say ha ye zaike dar tha so you go matlab i would request some of you to go to the field and talk to the stakeholder the farmer who is a majority of them who are Ill- illiterate completely illiterate and you ask them how easy it is whether it is user friendly can he easily use it and uh, how what are the advantages he was wasting his very precious time instead of doing something productive on his farm or off his farm he was running from office to office for cane slips for getting his money and getting his quota fixed so that his cane is purchased and purchased on time so that his farm gets free so that he can sow uh, either paddy or uh, wheat so instead of doing his so it, the entire human resource was getting used for all uh, non productive activity so all these things uh, had benefited not only in terms of it in terms of comfort in terms of his he's now spending his time with his family instead of spending time in offices so all that when there used to be a law and order issue all that has solved so there is quite a few things in the society and people are employing themselves in much more productive work so he is innovating now doing new things doing intercropping trying to search for good markets make more money and stuff like that Yeah, that's a real uh, challenge because in 1819 we were attacked from uh, Russia and uh, all other and Germany uh, because. our private sugar mills millers didn't want us to uh, take this business from them because by doing hanky panky they were earning a lot of money so they used their own ways and then we were blackmailed also we have to pay in some uh, cryptocurrency our 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 that time a software handler had to pay ransom he had to pay so then we realized so security is at most important data security is at most important for for us so that no uh, hacking is done no malwares are done no such macros are run all this is very very important because it 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 is uh, translates into money and i've shown you 35000 crore for this and 30 to 36000 crore 
which is farmers' money, and here it is government's money. In, in excise, it is government's money, thirty-six thousand crore. Their thirty-six thousand crore is farmers' money. So last year, we had handled seventy-two thousand uh, crore rupees. That's more than combinedly put together many state budgets. Where should they come from, and what should they actually approach to help you? A technology providers are good in writing codes and designing software, front end and back end. What they lack is the domain knowledge, and they don't want to work hard. I'm not naming any company. Uh, why should I? If they work hard on the domain side, they it would be satisfying for them. as well as it would be highly satisfying for the uh, end consumer the immediate consumer and the end consumer because then only they will understand the nuanced approach of uh, of uh, or to any domain uh, requirement unless and until you understand the domain requirement completely in a very nuanced manner मोटा मोटी समझ के यू पिक अप सम रिटायर्ड ऑफिसर हियर और देयर और रिटायर्ड टेक्नोक्रेट हियर और देयर हु हैज सम डोमेन नॉलेज विल नॉट वर्क द डोमेन नॉलेज हैज टू बी कंप्लीट एंड अ वेरी न्यूएंस्ड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दैट डोमेन हैज टू बी देयर देन ओनली यू विल बी एबल टू कैप्चर द टोटल फ्रिल्स ऑफ दैट सॉफ्टवेयर रिक्वायरमेंट एंड द डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स रिक्वायरमेंट no i have i think i am through anybody has any question i am ready to answer my first commissioner is also here to supplement that any questions i think post lunch asking question is also a very tough thing thank you thank you sir uh, may i request uh, anish sir to please present a small token of appreciation to shri sanjay bhusre the ias additional chief secretary excise and sugar industry department government of uttar pradesh can we have a huge round of applause for sanjay sir who has taken his time here and shared his in depth insights about his department and the initiatives that are being taken thank you so much sir for being here this afternoon with us thank you and may i request dr ravi gupta to please present a copy of the eagle magazine to shri sanjay bhusreddy so it's a so it's a 